Hello, everyone, and welcome to the original Next Level Gaming Podcast. I am Mike Mullis, a.k.a. Stinger NLG. It is a pleasure to have everybody out tonight, those of you who are going to listen to us live and those of you who are going to listen to us later on. It is my pleasure, my honor, my privilege to introduce to everybody our brand new co-host, Mr. John Place. John, how are you this evening? Oh, I'm doing great, Michael. And uh, first off, I'd uh, like to uh, say thank you for having me on the show. Um, a lot of you know me. Uh, I've been gaming for about 35 years um, on Xbox Live. Uh, my gamer tag is Techno Fabulous. Uh, my PlayStation ID is Techno Fabulous also. And if you want to follow me on Twitter, it's Techno Fabulous at John underscore Place. And uh, like I said, I'm real excited to be part of NLG. And I hope that I can bring some flair to the show and uh, and help this thing get moving, Michael. Well, you know, it's it's a pleasure to have you. You know, I've you and I have talked uh, for uh, for a few uh, few months on Twitter, and I've gotten to know you a bit, and uh, got to game with you a bit, and um, you know what I what I like about uh, what you bring to the table as a gamer is just a your experience. Um, you know, you and I are are just about the same age. I think you have, I think you have uh, six months to a year on me, actually. Right? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Actually, yeah, uh, yeah. I uh, I'm an older gamer. I turned 43 uh, November 29th. So, uh, but I can still keep up with the toddlers. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, see, that's the difference between you and I. But I've watched. Believe me, I've watched you play this week. I, I am I am no match. <laughs> I have slowed down in my old age. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, your experience, you know, brings a lot to the table. You and I have, you know, grown up playing the same type of games, the same type of generations throughout, you know, throughout the last, as you said, thirty five years. It's about how long I've been, I've been gaming. I mean, God, I had TI ninety nine four A playing stuff. Uh, you know, but, um, give us a little, uh, give us a little history on, on, you know, your growing up gaming and, and what your, uh, you know, what brought you to where you are now? Well, I'll try to make it as exciting as possible, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, um, I started off, you know, on the Atari 2600, uh, I had the Coleco vision and television, uh, a lot of my gaming, my early PC gaming, was on IBM computers and uh, even the Commodore 64. Oh, my. Uh, so, you know, through all these different console generations up to now, I mean, uh, I've had different consoles, and down through the years, uh, I've learned to appreciate all kinds of uh, different games uh, from different developers. And you you see the highs and lows of the gaming industry. and. Um, you know, but the number one thing for me, Mike, is that I just am passionate and I love gaming. And um, I'm a father of four children. Um, my whole family games, even uh, my fiance, uh, she games. She almost has 80,000 gamer score. I'm real proud of her. It, it's kind of a family thing that we do together. And that's, that, that, that's what makes the whole experience so wonderful. Um, but like I said, I, I wanted to... You know, when you asked me about being part of NLG, I was very excited. Um, I thought that this was an opportunity for me to step away from the console wars, to be objective. And uh, yes, I own an Xbox One. Actually, I own uh, multiple Xbox Ones. I also own a PlayStation 4, and I also own the Wii U. And uh, I thoroughly enjoy playing on each platform. And each console has a unique experience that I think that is necessary for the gaming industry to survive. So, I mean, I'm pretty hyped up, a uh, little nervous because I'm not really used to doing the podcast. So, I mean, I'm loaded up with Mountain Dew and Reese Cups, but I'm excited <laughs> to be part of this. <laughs> I'm excited to talk about gaming. You know, it's I, great. Yeah, I mean, I was excited too. I mean, you know, we... We try to hold to a different standard here, um, and you know, I, I, we, you know, we're all about all the platforms. You know, we're all about, you know, we want to be all about Xbox because, you know, look, we do know that 
Xbox as a whole, and my experience as a um, as a game journalist from you know for 15 years experience, is that Microsoft does not always get a fair shake in the in the media. So we want to we want to make sure that Xbox gamers also have a place to go where we can talk good and bad, but honestly about the Xbox, as well as you know those people who don't want to tune into a, a you know a specific uh, a specific uh, media outlet that that doesn't cover you know the PS4 correctly or doesn't cover the you know whatever's coming out from Nintendo correctly um, you know we want to make sure that we're highlighting the good and the not so good of of everybody uh, we're also working on um, improving our PC coverage and I've, I've got some things in the works um, I'm hoping that we're gonna bring a couple of guys on that'll cover some PC stuff for us. And what I like about our discussion uh, the other day when you were telling me about how you'd like to do some game reviews and things like that is how thorough you are when you play. And of course, you know, that's reflected in your gamer score uh, that, that I've seen. You should bring that up for people. You know, and you're right. Um, you know, I'm not the most talented gamer. There are there are guys out there, especially when you play like the first person shooters. There, there's always somebody that's faster, that's better. Uh, but I do have a, a a huge passion for gaming, and um, and it's not just the achievements alone. I, I've always thought that the achievements are important, but I, I feel like as a gamer that whether or not it's unlocking achievements or you're unlocking trophies. I mean, we game because we like to have fun and we like to have those unique experiences. And, um, you know, when I, when I play a game, uh, my fiance, she jokes with me all the time. She says, Oh, you're slower than a turtle. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. <laughs> and I, I just, I'm very, you know, I, I, I walk around and look at things, you know, um, I mean, heck I had 600 hours in Neverwinter, uh, free to play game for, uh, the Xbox one. And, I, I, I've got to get into that. I don't know how, and- I don't know how I've missed that, and I've got it. I've got it downloaded. Never, never touched it. Yeah, it's a, it, it's, it's actually a surprisingly good game, and it was, it, it actually came out at a time to when there was kind of a lull in like uh, uh, the Xbox One games. You know, usually in that early spring, summertime when there's, there's not much available, and that that game was kind of su- a surprise, and uh, I really latched on to that one, and uh, actually started a guild. And, uh, yeah, I mean, the game's fantastic. And they're still adding DLC as we speak. Yes. Yes, they are. So there you are, and there's your gamer score. <laughs> Anybody who wants to check him out, he is oh, techno-fabulous. Yeah. <laughs> and you're that's my sledding. Santa sled. Yeah, you're that's, uh, <laughs> yeah I, I, one thing I'm actually proud of, and one thing I love the avatars on the Xbox One, uh, the fact that, they're now bringing those more to the forefront and the NXOE dashboard update and yep. the program. Um, you know, now I can show off my 380 different outfits that I've purchased. <laughs> <laughs> Jeez. And it's, and you know, speaking of avatars, it's not just, uh, it's not just that. Um, the Sony's announced that you will now be able to buy PlayStation avatars as well for the PS4. So that is now coming to that platform. Um, Avatars are kind of fun. You know, avatars make you, uh, you know, make you kind of cool. Uh, I I like them over gamer picks, although I I have to admit um, some of the gamer picks that uh, you could do with your avatars are pretty cool. So, but uh, now you get, now you get avatars in, um, in PS4 as well, so uh, we'll be looking to you, to you to check that out to see if uh, uh, see what that's like and if it's you know any bit as good as the avatars on the uh, on the Xbox. Oh yeah, and I'll I'll definitely update. And you're and you're right, Michael. Those avatars, uh, I know there's some people that might not like them, but it, they've been a part of Xbox for so long, and it it's kind of like your digital self. Uh, and you can be funny with them. You can be quirky. It can be an outward reflection of your personality when you're gaming. But I, I think they're fantastic, and I like the fact that they're bringing those back to the Xbox One. I, I really miss those. And in fact, I'd like to see them even 
if you notice in the community feed, they're implementing in their, uh, you know, they're actually animated in the community feed. Which yes. I think it's absolutely fantastic. Yes. Yeah. Now, I'll, I'll have you know that uh, my wife uh, was instrumental in the design of my avatar. Oh, wow. <laughs> she sat down with me and said, no, you don't look like that. This is what you look like. <laughs> and we picked out. <laughs> and and just just like that, she's picking out my clothes. And somehow I'm wearing a hat. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, but, um, you know, it, it, this this kind of stuff is fun. And I'm, I'm not going to lie. I've spent a little bit of time just checking it out to see what I could, you know, what, how I could make it different. Now, even with the avatars, if you go to the avatar editor on the Xbox one with the NXOE, uh, you can do animation, you know, you can set your animation, you can take a gamer pick, which if you look, I don't know if you can see it here. Um, my gamer pick does kind of show up as one of my, um, you know, one of my placeholders, uh, that gamer pick came out of a, out of a pose, uh, from my avatar and you can even see, you know, this is the windows 10 app. You can see the avatar even animating right, right inside the apps. So I would say that I like your pose, but that sounds a little funny, but yeah, nah. it's great. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. So, um, you know, it's funny enough while we're, talking i usually my uh gamer pick is up on the screen and right now it's just our generic nlg logo so um and we have uh you know we have uh, your which i just showed your avatar which we could use for your hangouts logo going forward too oh that's awesome maybe a little so, kaleidoscope action yeah yeah, give everybody, make everybody, yeah, we can, ha we can hypnotize them while they're That's listening right. to the podcast. You will get a friend to subscribe. <laughs> so, John, I mean, this is really, I, I'm, I'm more than uh, humbled, and uh, it, it is my pleasure to um, officially have you aboard. Uh, I'm looking forward to uh, what we can accomplish uh, I, you know, with you, um, being as thorough in your game reviews and stuff like that, I can only imagine what we're going to do once, uh, once we can sort of, when I can get that, that rekindling back with some of our, uh, triple a publishers. Uh, I know that, uh, uh, I still have, I still have friends in the industry. Uh, I think we can, I think we can get some things that uh, that I used to get back in the day, and uh, we do have a lot of uh, indie developer and publisher support. So, you know, as, as people have seen from our channel, I've done quite a bit of uh, indie game reviews, and I definitely would like uh, you know like you to to help out with that too, if you if you so desire. And um, you know, there's a lot coming across the horizon, a lot of coverage that we can give our great subscribers. And I just oh. feel, I mean, I just feel so excited about, about where we're about to head. Well, I am too. And like I said, whether it's on the Wii U, the PlayStation or the Xbox, uh, I, I'm ready to play it. And, you know, again, I'll reiterate, this is exciting for me too, because it, 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 it gets my name out there a little bit. Uh, for those that know me, they know that, uh, I mean, I've always been a huge Xbox fan. And, and I would just like to tell for, uh, for, for the listeners out there, uh, Xbox has always been my main console. I just felt like I needed to branch out. Um, as, as we all know, as gamers, since both the Xbox One and PS4 launched a couple years back, uh, it's been pretty nasty at times, uh, the social media, the internet, and... I just, you know, I think it's time for us, you know, you, you always hear the gamers unite. And in, in a way, that's true. Um, like I said, I, I, I just, I want to play and enjoy the games. I want to share those experiences with, with all of you. Uh, and, and like I said, I love gaming first and foremost. And, you know, hopefully when I get a grip on things, you know, maybe I'll get a little bit better at this. Like I said, I'm a rookie, but that's okay. At the, at the podcast, I'm, I'm an old school gamer. Uh, but I do have a lot of knowledge that I can share with people and man, I just love gaming, man. It's just a fantastic time. 
uh, we've got so many great games coming up. I mean, I'm just totally jacked up. <laughs> oh my God. We're, and we're playing great games now. I yeah. Mean, when, we're, yeah. when we're done with this podcast, where are we going? Halo 5. <laughs> Halo 5. I, Halo I, I 5. You earlier, so that campaign's not going to complete itself. <laughs> no, but, and I just finished the legendary solo, and it's a bear. I can tell you. It's, it's tough as nails. And, uh, you know, I started up a Spartan club, and I'm ready to rock the multiplayer and finish up the remaining campaign achievements. It's a fantastic game. Yeah, it, I, I am blow, I'm, I mean, I'm blown away by it. And, um, you know... I, I don't, I, I, if you, I think I said this yesterday on my, on my own Twitter feed. Um, now I, personally, I'm digging the story. I kind of understand what three, four, three, I wanted to do. And I said uh, a couple of weeks ago that I think this is really the game and the story that three, four, three, I wanted to tell. And I think, I think it has, I think it's taken some people a little by surprise because they're not, this isn't 100% master chief story. And I think some people are, are, I don't, I don't want to say put off by it. Oh, well, does some people do, you know, I've seen some really, you know, down comments about the story. I don't understand that myself, but, um, you know, but I don't have a problem if if people aren't in tune with the story, like like you know, like I was, like uh, like the guys I'm playing with are. But I have done nothing but gawk at this game. Uh, I, you know, I said uh, last week when I was running solo that I thought that um, part of the problem with what's going on in gaming today uh, rests in places like Digital Foundry, who you know, has to take each game and and hook it up to machinery so that they can tell you every flaw in it. Um, and so there's this there's this aura that this game is not a looker, that this game isn't as as good looking as as a next gen title. Um, well, I gotta I gotta tell you, Michael. I mean, I, I've already pl been playing for hours. I've I've been through the campaign. Um, I'm on my second run through and, and co-op even. And if, if you don't mind me uh, just kind of on the storyline, um, you know, I read some different reviews, you know, some people, you know, were giving it kind of a low review. Some people were giving it very high marks. I, I think really, and I'm a huge Halo fan, a huge Halo fan. And I think the one thing you need to keep in mind, this is the fifth in a series of games. This is not the first, second, third, fourth. This is the fifth actual main Halo game. Um, and I love the campaign. I think the campaign is fantastic. I think the multiplayer is fantastic. Uh, you know, Except for entered... Warzone. We were cussing about Warzone. Let's be yes. honest. <laughs> yeah, I mean, the campaign, Michael, they've introduced a whole set of new characters and they're trying to push the series. They have to move forward. And in order to do that in a series, sometimes you have to introduce some new elements. Absolutely. Um, and they've only got so much time to tell that story. So I think that if anybody was harsh on the story on a review, I think that that's totally inaccurate. And the game is fantastic. I, I got to be honest, what 343i did with this game, I mean, it's butter smooth. It looks fantastic. I mean, there's nothing out there as far as a shooter that is even close to this game. And I, I've been playing for hours. It's fantastic. I can't disagree with that. I mean, I, and that's the gist of what my post was, my tweet was yesterday, is that you, if you have a, an issue with the story, I kind of understand that. If you're a longtime Halo player and you, you're, taken a, 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 you're taken by surprise by what they've done with the story, I can understand that. You know, um, God, look at how many people, look at how many people went uh, berserk over, Star Wars Episode One. After all these years of Star Wars, and and Episode One was just you know people people just freaked out. I get that, but I don't know anybody. I don't know how anybody could look at this game, could get into this game, could see the gunfire, could see the enemies, could see what's going on on the screen, and think to themselves, well, "This doesn't look any better than Halo Four. I mean, there's just no way." 
This is well, this it, is it's just such a gorgeous looking game. It's fantastic, and the thing that you hit on the special effects, all the little graphic uh, eye candy that I like to call it that's going on, and the frame rate being so solid. There isn't a shooter out there that looks and plays this well. And the actually one thing that I'm very impressed with is the audio and the sound in yes. the game. Uh, it's just fantastic. The guns have never sounded better. I mean, the clanging of the Spartan armor. I mean, it, the game is glorious. Uh, so really, in my honest opinion, and even though, you know, like I said, I, I've always been, uh, you know, my main console's always been Xbox, even though I play on different platforms, and uh, and you know this game on a, on my scale of one to ten, it shouldn't be lower than a nine from anybody. The game's fantastic. It's it's probably what I would consider the the first true next gen shooter that's been released. There's nothing like it. Um, you know, fantastic game. Well, and you know, look, in three days, we're gonna we're gonna test that theory because you know, Call of Duty Black Ops Three is rolling out Friday, and that's got a lot of hype to it. Got a lot of hype. Um, I, I've seen videos. I mean, it looks pretty good. And you know. you, I'm a huge Call of Duty fan, and uh, down through the years, um, <laughs> I always catch a lot of flack no matter what I do. <laughs> but, <laughs> you know, hey, welcome a, lot, to my world. <laughs> a lot of people are like, well, you know, because there's a lot of people that are either a Halo or a COD fan, not both. You do have you have some people that are both. I, I can appreciate all the different shooters. I mean, I play Battlefield. I've also purchased Star Wars Battlefront. If it shoots, I play it. I mean, <laughs> if it's if it's a game that I can play with my friends, and you you know what you hit on earlier too with uh, like Digital Foundry and and people just uh, when they d review a game and they break it down with pixels and resolution and frame rate. When you and I were growing up, Michael. Uh, they didn't do reviews like that. You would actually buy a video game magazine. I, I remember when Howard Phillips was president of Nintendo. I'd open up a Nintendo Power magazine, and as I was reading through the magazine, uh, you would read an article on the, uh, the game review, and they would talk about the characters, the story. They would touch a little bit on the graphics, uh, but now they're they're breaking these games down technically, and they're missing the whole point. They're not talking about the the, the meat and the sauce of the game, and it, it's kind of sad. It you is know, that that happens, you know. And look, even it, it happened last generation too, because this is this isn't the first generation that Digital Foundry has been around. Now, you know, and of course they spawned another another guy, NX Gamer, who does the same kind of thing, and. Now you got dueling, technical, blah blah blah, and it even actually, <laughs> it even actually got IGN and GameSpot to do these stupid things too, where you know let's compare the two games, and you got the slider, so you could see if the stubble on a uh, uh, snake's face is, you know, if there's five more hairs on the PS4 version and the Xbox version. Well, the Xbox version sucks. I mean, this is not what this is not what gaming's supposed to be about, and it, it it's really. Uh, it's really taken its toll on a lot of people, and um, to be honest, you're right. We didn't do that. And even back in the day, when I, you know, when I ran the Next Level Gaming website, we did reviews back then in the Xbox and the PS2 days. The big thing was whether or not a game was 480p. Now, 480p back then, as you remember, John, was what? Just standard old progressive scan, right? <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. <laughs> you got you got widescreen, but it was still just progressive scan. There was never a time when I I mean I would point it out if a game did 480p, but I never ever said, well this version does 480p and this version doesn't, so therefore that version stinks or that console well, can't do it. Back then it was a programming choice. Right, and you know the way I look at it, Nintendo, Sony, Microsoft, and, and I'm just going to be honest about it. Um, you know, the, the, the hatred and the arguing needs to stop. All of these console companies need to be successful uh, to help the gaming industry. There is, a place, there is a place for each one of these consoles. And the more successful each one of these companies are, the better experiences we're going to get. Um, you know, as I've told my friends, I said, 
you know, the Xbox guy that makes fun of the PlayStation guy is no better than the PlayStation guy that makes fun of the Xbox guy. And, um, you, you know, I just wish that they would go back to the more just genuine uh, gaming reviews where they would talk about the gameplay, talk about the characters and the story. And instead, when you read a game review, uh, the first part of the game review is just all technical nitpicking. And that's, that's not what gaming's about. I mean, I've been gaming for years, and when I'm playing and you're playing a shooter, you're not looking at the blades of grass. You're not looking to see if the puddles are 3D in a racing game. You're looking at it, and if it looks good, you're happy. If you're having fun, if you're playing co-op or multiplayer, it's about having fun. And yeah. Bottom line. My kids still game on a GameCube. I oh, mean, wow. that's, you know, they don't, they don't care. No, they don't care about that stuff. My son's 11. Do you think my son has ever, my son has never come up to me and said, Hey dad, um, I can't play uh, quest of dungeons because, um, well, this looks like it's in 480p, you know, it, I'm like, he, he just, he did, you know, rational people don't think that way. And I'm well, hoping and that, that, you know, that kind of spreads. And you can, and you can't really tell. I mean, for example, I've, I've got a 48 inch television set, 240 Hertz, beautiful picture <laughs> and unless you have the proper equipment you don't know what what the resolution is i mean i had um, for instance uh metal gear ground zeros on the xbox one when i first played it for a little bit the first time it looked really good i thought it was 1080 the way it looked i thought you know and it was native 720 i believe you know before it was upscaled but when i when you look at the game I would not have been, it looks so good. I wouldn't have been able to tell the difference. And, no. you know. Um, and, I, and I've got you beat. I got a 72-inch DLP. There's seven. You, wow. You couldn't tell me what resolution some of these games were. I mean, I, unless I'm looking for it, I can't even tell half the, half the time if there's some sort of blur. Like I hear the, God, this looks like it's been smeared with Vaseline. How in the world do you tell that? Unless you're unless you stop, pause the game, and then just take your magnifying glass and go up to the screen like Sherlock Holmes looking for it. I don't know how you see it. I I I, I, I can never get that. Never figure I, it out. I I think it's more used to fuel this console war thing, which really needs to stop. Uh, it's it's not. And for anybody listening out there. Uh, maybe there's a developer out there. Maybe there's, uh, you know, someone from IGN. You never know who's listening in. But it's really not good for gaming. And I, I think we need to get away from that. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's, it's all about gaming with your friends, the community you're in. Uh, are you enjoying the game? And bottom line is, uh, I, I really don't, myself, I don't go by a lot of reviews on games. Um, you know, after you've been gaming for a long time, you, you sort of have a, 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 you know, an ability within to determine whether a game's good or not on your own. And if I see a game I want to play, I, I get it. You know, it's Star Wars Battlefront, for example. Uh, a lot of people were complaining about the price of the DLC and this and that. And, and, and I can see kind of that point of view, but it's a game I want to play. So I get it. I don't base what I purchase on, on what even a friend's, I, I make my own judgments and, and what? we're all gamers. What? You know. I'm shocked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, yeah. See, this is why, this is what I think. Um, I think this is, this is an element that is going to really be, uh, really be great to see uh as as you bring your review content to to our subscribers is that i think that i think that people are going to see that you're you're pulling this from a different you're not going with with what everybody else says and and they're going to get a a unique perspective so uh, um, no uh, and and i'm excited and if anybody out there that uh that supports nlg or follows michael or has for a long time um you know i i'm like i said i'm real excited uh any kind of game reviews or or, or you know any kind of uh, games that we can get to try out that i that i can review or play i'd love that because i'm i mean i'm playing 24 7 so whether it's the playstation the xbox or the wii u I mean, I'll play it 
try it out. Um, I'm a little more thorough. I, I know some people will, will put a game like on easy and they'll run through a game and they'll play it for a couple hours and they'll do a little review. I like to do like one review and then maybe a couple weeks later, give a second uh, review, like an update review. But I, I like to play it a little more thorough. Uh, you can't do an honest review just in a, in a few minutes of gameplay. You really need to get into it a little bit more. And I, I think that's where, where I can be real helpful because I love gaming so much. Um, you know, and, and I'll be honest and fair about a game, no matter what platform it, it, it's on, you know, that's, that's great. And that's what we're looking forward to. So, uh, so with that, we can transition from talking about gaming and console wars and stuff to talk about some good, some good going on in the, in the industry. Cause there is a lot, I mean, look, you, you've, you've come at the right time. Um, we have, <laughs> this is now November 3rd. There is a ton of stuff going on. And oh my God. Even, yeah. even tonight, we've got a lot to cover. And I think we're going to, you know, we may even hold some stuff depending on how long we're going to next week because we're not going to have a shortage of news over the next couple of months uh, going into the going into the winter uh, or the back end of winter, I should say. I mean, there's just so much going on. And um, we can start with something that's it's not as well known as like, here, you know, Jeff Keeley does his uh, VGA awards and things like that. But there was, <laughs> yeah. there was um, over the past week, the uh, 33rd annual Golden Joystick Awards, which is done in the O2 Arena in London. And there were, um, there were a lot of good games that were given awards at this, uh, at this presentation. And I have the rundown of what they are. Um, first, I'd like to uh, I'd like to give or I'd like to to tell people um, the Lifetime Achievement Award because um, it's kind of bittersweet. Uh, the Lifetime Achievement Award was given to Nintendo's um, former CEO Satoru Iwata, who we all know uh, passed away uh, earlier this year, and uh, you know the gaming industry is still kind of reeling and mourning from his. Uh, from his loss, and so oh, I thought it was. Go ahead. Yeah, he was a. Uh, I just. I. I just. He was a. Uh, a, a big part of Nintendo, and uh, his passing is a great loss for gamers. Um, you know, he died at the age fifty-five. Um, you know, and he had a big role, Michael, in. Uh, you know, with the development of Super Smash Brothers, and he was very active with the Pokemon series. So, oh, um, you know, just a, just a huge loss for Nintendo. His, his fingerprints are on so much of Nintendo's properties. I oh, mean, yeah. he, goes, he goes back programming as long as we've gone back uh, gaming, even longer in some cases. So uh, it was nice for him to get the Lifetime Achievement Award. I, I thought that was really, really nice. Um, so going down the list, uh, the best original game was Bloodborne. And... I don't know. Um, I thought Bloodborne was supposed to be a lot like Dark Souls. Am I wrong? Well, uh, I'm going to find out soon. I haven't played it yet, so okay. uh, right now that that it's is made by the same is, developer. That is a game that I've I've really wanted to get and play just to see for myself. Uh, now that I have both consoles, lead consoles, um, uh, I, I can't wait to get my hands on it and play it. You know. Well. It it also happened to win best PlayStation game. So uh, Bloodborne pulled away with two awards. Um, Ori and the Blind Forest also took multiple awards away, which I thought was very well deserving for Moon Studios. Uh, best audio, which I can't, um, I can't disagree with in any way, shape, or form. That was one of the most beautiful soundtracks I've heard in a very long time. Uh, oh, it was and best fantastic. And best Xbox game, which, you know, look, that, that's a testament to a small studio that's not, um, and, and no offense to any of these guys, that's not 343i, that's not the Coalition, it's not Naughty Dog, it's not Sony Santa Monica, it's not Ubisoft, it's not, um, you know, Electronic Arts. Here's a small studio, Moon Studios, put, put together this game that Microsoft had the foresight to pick up 
with their IP. I mean, it, it, it's Microsoft's IP. They, they had the foresight to have Moon Studios do this game. And it, it really, it was, it was like an emotional roller coaster, number one. And the audio well, that, soundtrack was just gorgeous. Well, and, and you hit on something real important. They, they touched an emotional level for all of us gamers. I mean, I had friends calling me. They're like, <laughs> Techno, should I be, should I be crying right now? You know, and I won't divulge any names. I'm like, no, I've, I'm, I'm wiping my tears uh, away too. But, yeah, Ori's fantastic. Uh, the beginning yeah, of that game was just like, oh my god, are you serious? Did this just happen? It, it is fantastic, and you're right. The, the 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 musical score in that game, there's nothing out there that just really, uh, really touched a lot of people. So that 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 award is well deserved of that game. Yes. Also winning multiple awards uh, was Grand Theft Auto. Uh, Grand Theft Auto actually won. GTA Online won for best multiplayer. Uh, their first person mode that came out in the next generation consoles, the PS4 and the Xbox One, won Innovation of the Year. And it won best PC game. And it won something called Playfire's Most Played, which meant. Correct. Right. The, the, I guess it had the, you know, it's, it's one of the biggest played games of the year. Um, it, I, again, hard to maybe the you know innovation of the year maybe I I don't know, but can't can't argue with some of the other stuff. I mean, and their and their their unit sales speak for itself too. Oh, there's <clears throat> Grand Theft Auto has a huge fan base. It's a it's a fantastic game. Now, I, I was a little different, Michael. I played it on the 360 because it came out toward the end before the Xbox One was released. Um, I did not play the Xbox one version. Uh, I, and it, there was a time and I still, uh, I'm not so, I'm not real big on the remastered, uh, versions of games. Um, uh, not that there's not a place for those, uh, when the Xbox one came out and these new consoles, I wanted to play these next gen games. I, I wanted to see a little bit of that extra horsepower, which we're just now starting to see, uh, with the cloud compute, uh, that's going to be coming out, you know, and, uh, you know, we got some things that Microsoft's doing in particular that I think are going to be pushing the boundaries, but both on the PS4 and Xbox one, you're going to see, you know, from here on out, you're going to start seeing, I, I think a lot of gamers at first, um, you know, they wanted that next gen experience. And I, I think we're just starting to knock on the door of that, uh, as you can see with Halo five and stuff, but yeah, Grand Theft Auto is a fantastic game, not to take anything away. There's, there's tons of people that love it. Uh, I, I spent tons of hours in on the 360 version. I just, I moved on to some other games with the, the new console launch. Well, sure. And, you know, I think I, I'd, I'd like to, I'd like to, um, maybe in our next podcast or two, I'd like to talk about remasters and what that you know what that's done, what it means, what the future is, and that kind of thing. Uh, because there is some substantive talk we can have about whether or not remasters have been good for this generation, whether or not they've been good for the publishers. Um, so that's something I definitely would like to uh, to talk about with you, you know, in a later in a later podcast for sure. That'd be great. Yeah. No. All right. So um, another multi award winner was Splatoon, uh, a surprise game that came out of Nintendo that not only won Best Nintendo Game, uh, which, to be honest, um, was surprising considering Super Mario Maker is probably just as impressive, uh, and won Best Family Game, which also, to me, was a very surprising um, award considering... Everything these days is Disney Infinity or now Lego Dimensions um, and Just Dance and all these kind of games. So for Splatoon to come up with the Family Game Award, that's kind of huge. Oh, that's big. Absolutely. Uh, rounding out the only other multi-winner we're going to get to last because I know it's one. I know it's one near and dear to your heart. So I'm going to go through the rest. Oh, yeah. I'm going to go through the rest of these really quickly, and then we'll swing back around to the big winner. So best indie game, and this is also huge because the you know the indie game scene has exploded 
So there are so many good indie games out there. The indie game that won the Golden Joystick Award was the Kerberal Space Program, which is actually, I think it's, um, I think it's in Steam now, and coming to, um, coming at least to the Xbox One, PlayStation 4, Wii U. Uh, it came out in April. And I believe that the console versions are coming down the pike. I don't remember seeing them released quite yet for the consoles, but um, I may be incorrect about that. Uh, there's been so many indie games that have... Uh, actually, no, it has not. And in fact, uh, I'm looking on their site. Uh, the PlayStation 4, Xbox One, and Wii U versions are coming early 2016. So, um, that won the indie game for them of the year. Uh, mobile game, no surprise here, Fallout Shelter, uh, the, the, the kind of warm-up to Fallout 4, uh, made by Bethesda. Uh, gaming personality, I don't know why this gets an award, but um, you know, can you guess who that is? He's, the, he's only the most popular celebrity on on youtube these days <laughs> oh really yes tell our listeners who who he is it's not me you can it's not, it's techno yeah, fabulous. It's me. congratulations yeah. <laughs> uh, it's it's well it's our it, it's the man the myth the legend pewdiepie um the only the only the only guy i know on youtube who has had a south park episode dedicated to him Oh, yeah, and he was just uh, on the late-night talk show not too long ago. He uh, was, and he oh, made yes. millions of dollars a year. It's amazing. Speaking of Fallout, the most wanted game is Fallout 4, which, again, surprising considering that this uh, holiday is packed with um, you know, Halo, Tomb Raider, Call of Duty, Star Wars Battlefront. Um, so Fallout 4 is your most wanted game. Critics' Choice Award went to Metal Gear Solid V, uh, The Phantom Pain, which, by the way, shipped 5 million copies across uh, four platforms. Um, that's not bad at all. It, it's not as good as Witcher, but, it's, but 5 million copies is nothing to sneeze at um, these, this day and age. So congratulations to them. Um, and... Uh, I, <laughs> Not to break from script, but we do have a little bit of potential breaking stuff going on today. Um, I don't know if you heard this. I was kind of, um, I was kind of uh, uh, looking around while we were finalizing our topics for tonight. And since we're talking about Metal Gear, um, it appears that Konami is closing that LA studio. Now, oh, wow. it's still it's still rumored, but. Sources have told Eurogamer that um, L.A., which really was the arm of Kojima Productions, um, and they they were you know part of the Metal Gear Solid Five development studio, uh, Metal Gear Online actually, um, and they say Metal Gear Online still slated to hit the PC uh, later on, but. Um, that's the rumor is that Konami has closed that studio. So oh, wow. um, I'm thinking that Hideo Kojima's, Kojima's not coming back from vacation that they said he was <laughs> on. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah. yeah and, and I don't even know how I feel about it. Like I said, you know, he's a talented, uh, talented dev, um, you know, his name, you know, with Metal Gear Solid, he's been part of for a long time. Uh, there's no doubt he tells a great story. Uh, I'm sure that uh, there will be some game that he is involved with, uh, with somebody, uh, sometime. <laughs> well, and I've asked everybody who's been on the who's been on the podcast. Um, so I'll ask you, where do you? And sorry to sorry to tangent off for a second, listeners. But um, John, where do you think he ends up? Oh boy! Take it, take it from your gut. What does your gut tell you? 
uh, you know, I don't know anymore. Uh, like I said, everything that's happened this console genera this has been like the strangest console generation I've ever been involved with. Uh, to be honest with you, uh, there's been all kinds of unpredictable things. Um, you know, uh, he's he's got strong ties to Sony. That's where um, I think he's going. Uh, I don't, uh, you know, uh, he's he's always uh, been deeply involved with Sony. Uh, my first guess would be if, if anything, uh, you know, he'll probably make, you know, he'll probably be involved with Sony in, in some uh, capacity, I would guess. Um, That's where I think he's going. I mean, he's professed his love for the PlayStation. Let me tell you, they would take him with open arms like nobody's business. I mean, there's, they would do whatever they had to do to get him aboard. And, and you know, that, man, uh, that could be a game-changing um, win for them if he's on board making, you know, PlayStation 4 games. Now, I will say this, as much, and he's a very uh, talented creator, um, you know, you, you can't take that away from him. And later on, when we get to that special game of mine that you're talking about, um, uh, uh, you know, and like I said, I've, I've got my own, uh, opinions on Metal Gear, uh, the fan of pain, uh, but we can get into that later, but yeah, he's got, I agree with you, Michael, he's got strong ties to Sony. Um, you know, I think if, if, if he does do something for them, um, uh, you know, uh, he's, he's talented. Uh, I mean, that, that's a big plus for them. Um, yeah. you know, a big win, you know, if they can do something like that with him. So that's going to be that's going to be I think next year's big news. He's going to go somewhere. Um, if he rolls in, I think uh, when I had Frankie Aller on a couple weeks ago, he I well, I can't remember if he had said this or not. Thought um, now it wasn't him. It was somebody else that said you know, maybe he does a Kickstarter. There's no way <laughs> Dale Kajima does a Kickstarter for anything. Oh no, should not lose that enough. Yeah, he's going to. Oh, don't don't say <laughs> don't say the S word around me. I'm not. <sighs> Sega. Uh. <laughs> All right. Uh, sorry. Okay. So, um, uh, best esports icon was Counter Strike goes Anders Bloom. Yay. Okay. Uh, best uh, best gaming platform. This was kind of bizarre. Not bizarre. Uh, this is the wrong word to use. I'll go with interesting. Steam, the best gaming platform. Not a console. Steam. I don't do much well, Steam gaming. But... I, I don't either. And like I said, my roots started off as a PC gamer, but that that's been years ago. Mine uh, as well. As as I've gotten older, uh, and you know, of course, you have families. Uh, these consoles today are fantastic, uh, and I I still don't mind gaming once in a while on a PC. But I, I think that the consoles um, they're starting to you know with the, with the types of RAM they're using, with with the hardware, and then with the software development. These consoles are putting out fantastic games, and they're bringing them to your living room for the families. And to be honest with the consoles, a much easier platform, in, in my opinion, for the entire family to get on the ease of use. Uh, personally, Xbox Live is fantastic. Uh, the infrastructure, it's just, just a lot easier for the whole family to enjoy. Um, but, you know, Phil Spencer even commented, uh, he made comments uh, months ago about Steam, um, you know, uh, as a competitor and what they do, you know, uh, not so much that xbox is competing with another console as they are with steam so uh that probably holds some clout there are millions of steam users out there uh that that, that use that service oh yeah i, I mean there it's it's grown into grown into a just valve's best case scenario it's like lightning in a bottle that just hasn't gone away uh you know uh <laughs> It's funny. I've never seen. I don't think I've ever seen a company move away from actual game development to do to do this. And they've got. I mean, the last that I had heard, and I don't keep up with it, but the last I had heard in like February was that they had over 125 million active users 
on Steam. That's insane. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's, uh, that, that's amazing. 8.9 million concurrent users on Steam. But that's, I, I can't, it's hard to even fathom. So, st- I, so th- that said, maybe I, maybe I can understand that over console. So, uh, let's see. Best gaming performance. Uh, this would be performance within a game by a, uh, by a voice actor or actor. It was Ashley Birch as Chloe in Life is Strange, which um, I, can, I can understand that. that was a, those were great. Um, and now, storytelling, visual design, gaming moment, an ultimate game of the year, your baby. <laughs> Go ahead and announce it. The Witcher 3. The Witcher 3. <clears throat> I, I tell you, <laughs> I'm so stoked. And now that I just ate another Reese cup, I've got more sugar in me, man. So I'm, I'm really feeling it, Michael. No, uh, no uh, Witcher, Witcher 3 is a fantastic game. Uh, I, I played on Death March mode. I also played the Hearts of Stone expansion. I've got so far as up to date, I've got all 1,500 out of 1,500 gamer score. In my opinion, and I know there's a lot of listeners out there, but I still say it, it, it would be my vote. I know we've got Fallout in some of these fantastic games, um, but these games are coming late in the year. Uh, Witcher came out earlier in the spring. Um, in my opinion, uh, out of uh, the size and scope of the game, the storytelling, the graphics, in my opinion, Witcher 3, hands down, game of the year. That's, that's my solid opinion on the game. Well, that's definitely a contender. There's no doubt about it. Uh, I think your contenders are right now, as it, just as it stands, if we're if we're looking at it today, I think your contender your contenders for game of the year would be Witcher Three, Metal Gear Solid, um, Bloodborne, Halo Five, uh, and that, and possibly Fallout Four. Now, Fallout Four is going to have to, you know, haul ass to to catch up to that, but it's got the potential to do so, but I think that's your game of the year candidates. Yeah. And you know, in the past, there have been some games that came out late in the year, like take Skyrim, for example. Okay. Uh, one game of the year came out, you know, late in the year. I just, I feel that game of the year, uh, should be more meaningful. I, I don't think that a game should be come out in mid November, uh, toward the end of the year. Uh, nobody's played it. No, you know, it's not in the hands of gamers. It hasn't been tested. So, uh, you know, within a matter of a couple of weeks, I don't know how anybody could make that assessment that, it, that Fallout would be game of the year. Now, I'm not taking anything away from the game. I, I think it will be fantastic. But I, to be honest, CD Projekt Red, the way that they handled the game, the way that they did the DLC, uh, it's a huge epic story. I mean, you got the passion. You got the fighting. I mean, you got the graphics. It's this huge world. It's just fantastic. And it's been out for months and people have been playing it. I, I, I think that kudos goes to that, that studio, CD Projekt Red. Uh, and that would, that would still be my – I'm kind of partial to The Witcher, but, hey, it's a fantastic game. <laughs> well, and uh, CD Projekt Red also is studio of the year. Uh, and well-deserved, yeah. 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 Well. Um, so that rounds out the Golden Joystick Awards. Uh, now, um, I just noticed, looking over on our actual YouTube channel, that for some reason, and we'll check into this for the next podcast, um, comments seem to be disabled right now, which probably is why we don't get a lot of comments during the podcast, is because you can't. I don't. I'm going to find out why, and we'll make sure that that's. Um, that that's fixed for uh, for going forward. But if you're listening to us uh, after our uh, live broadcast and comments should be open, um, leave a comment below. Uh, do you agree with these? Do you disagree with these? Tell us what your game of the year you think is, uh, and just you know let us know so we can we can talk to you uh, and and interact with you. Uh, as I have always said in our comment section, by the way. Um, if you are a if you are a fanboy or a console warrior, you could just keep keep on passing by. Um, those comments are not needed, not welcome. We want 
you know, if you've got an opinion, a strong opinion, just bring it fair, bring it well, uh, and don't fanboy out. And we would be glad, John and I, to to interact with you. Um, also, uh, as I have said, if you uh, and I just tweeted it out, if you guys have questions or comments, um, go ahead and tweet them out to us. You can either tweet them to OG underscore NL Gaming. Uh, you can tweet them to me at Stinger NLG, or you can tweet them to John at uh, John underscore Place, and uh, we'll try to answer them for you. Uh, so, John, if you see somebody ask you a question, go ahead and and bring it up when we get a chance, and I'll do uh, the same. Definitely, and like I said, and to all those listeners out there, uh, you know, like I like I said, I'm new at a lot of this, and each week is going to get better. Uh, but the one thing that I, I really feel like I'll bring to the show is some excitement. Um, and not so much tonight. Uh, I'm, I'm kind of a comedian. Uh, I think that, you know, as, as gamers, it's important not to only talk about topics, but people want to listen to a show that where you have a few laughs, share oh, some yeah. experiences. So I, I'm pretty excited, man. I'm a pretty happy go lucky guy. I'm on the corny side. That you are, but I'm hip with it and I get jiggy with it. <laughs> okay. So in one fell swoop, <laughs> you actually gained street cred, and then re-lost it in the same sentence. <laughs> That's right. That's the way I roll, baby. <laughs> oh, my God. 1990-some-odd called in Will Smith wants his, wants his catchphrase back. <laughs> I don't even know. And, okay, so um, I will end the podcast early, by the way, if you ever utter the word YOLO, just to let you know. <laughs> okay. I I don't <laughs> – I don't think I'll ever say that. Okay. Uh, you're 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 cool. You're all fine. right. Yeah. That is that is that is verboten. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, oh man. All right. So let's switch gears a little bit, and we're gonna talk a little. Uh, we're gonna talk a little quarterly earnings. Now, before everybody goes to sleep, we're not gonna get into details of stuff. But uh, in the last week, three companies. Uh, did bring out their qu quarterly earnings report. And since we covered Microsoft's on theirs and Ubisoft's on theirs, it is only fair to do it for everybody else. Uh, so we're only going to bring the kind of the meat of what it means to us as gamers. And we're going to start with Sony. Um, I think by now, everybody knows that uh, the PlayStation 4 has been massively successful uh, as evidenced by the fact that John bought one. So. <laughs> no, thanks. Wow. Well, you are now officially. <laughs> yeah. You, I'm a bullseye. For you God are now thanks, officially. Michael. <laughs> <laughs> you are now officially part of the 29.3 million PS4s that have been shipped worldwide. Let me repeat what? that number. Since it launched in 2013, 29.3 million PS4s have shipped worldwide. Now, that ship that's not sold through, but you have to think that that number, that sold through number is probably very close to shipped. Uh, so you're looking at anywhere, I'm going to guesstimate between 25 and 29 million PS4s that are in people's homes worldwide. That's nuts. Well, it is, Michael, and I got to be honest. This is the very first PlayStation that I've owned my entire life. I've never owned a the PS1, the 2, the 3, any of the prior uh, Sony consoles. Uh, I just, for me, I wanted to enjoy all the experiences. Basically, I got the PS4 for their exclusives. Um, my multi-plats and most of my games will be bought for the Xbox One. But th just because of the gamer in me, I realized that I was missing out on some of the great Sony games. Uh, the Uncharted series, Last of Us, Bloodborne. Uh, you know, I'm a big racing fan. So th there's there's games on that console I want. And, and in my short time of having it so far, uh, I can see the appeal to it. And, you know, they're, like I said, whether it's Nintendo, Sony, or Xbox, each console is unique. And there there is a lot of cool stuff about that PS4. I, I like the dashboard. It's fast. It's quick. It's elegant looking. Uh, the speed's fast, and and uh, I know everybody's going to be in a hoopla when I say this, but it's it's still faster than the NXOE dashboard for the Xbox One. Uh, 
Um, it, it just is. So there is some appeal to that console, and I can see why it appeals to some people. I'm, I'm glad I have both. I love both consoles, and I'm going to be playing the heck out of both of them. But that's remarkable numbers, Michael, for, for Sony to do that, and kudos to them uh, for doing that. Well, and, and the more important thing for Sony itself, that, that console is helping them to <laughs> helping them to to really turn around the entire company you know uh Kazurai is really banked on playstation being what turns around sony you know that to the extent that they have taken the playstation name and kind of put it at the forefront over everything else sony does um, and and so they have, you know, they in the in the second quarter, which is what this latest latest quarterly earning report uh, shows, their profit they profited seven hundred twenty nine million dollars. Most of that's off the off the PlayStation Four, um, not just in hardware sales, but software sales. The Bloodborne's, the the Drive Club, you know, Drive Club is a two million uh, unit seller um you know there's there's just a lot that's booing sony because of their turnaround with the ps4 and uh you know mine will come next year uh as i get fundage because quite honestly i gotta play uncharted i, I mean i say this almost every week i gotta play Is uncharted I <laughs> fundage. Is that a word, Michael? <laughs> that is a word. <laughs> fundage. I got up, it. I'm writing it, it down right now. Fundage. 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 <laughs> got <Right>. it. <laughs> <laughs> you'll find. You'll find. My, you'll find. I, I contribute to the vocabulary of the of the uh, of the United States. I am a. I am an English. I mean, I would. I'm what is called an English language creator. <laughs> i'd love it so when i get more money next year and i can afford a playstation 4 uh, to go along with my xbox one uh then i will have it um and and you know look i've owned i've owned almost every playstation except for the four i had a one i had the well, psx had a ps2 had a ps3 i still have a fully functioning psp handheld the pre vita uh sitting in my drawer that i pull out every once in a while because you know if i'm on a if i'm on a plane or something like that and i don't want to yank out the laptop or something like that i that's you know my psp still works perfectly so you know i'm no stranger to the playstation brand um i didn't choose the xbox because i don't like playstation i chose it because and i said again i say this all the time i chose it because there were features that more fit my household and more fit what, what I wanted to do overall, including not just gaming, but the TV stuff and the snapping and the, the, you know, the eventual, you know, now we see the NXOE, which is the, the windows 10 um, coming of age in the Xbox. I mean, there were reasons that I got it uh, next year because I have to play Uncharted. I will be getting a PS4. So I will be contributing to the, to whatever they're, whatever their quarterly earnings at that point are too. And uh, so this is really, I mean, it's really strong numbers for them. And it's its only going to get better next year when a lot of their games come out. And I, I think it's important to, to keep in mind, you know, you got to give credit to where credit's due. Uh, you know, Microsoft right now is really doing very strong. Uh, their software sales are out through the roof. Uh, I, I think as a gamer, and, and away from the console war stuff, being separated from that. I'm glad that, that all these companies are doing well. Nintendo's profitable. They've got profits off the chart. Yeah, uh, that, was, that was our next topic, too. So we can transition Xbox, right to that. Xbox's profits, software sales, the console bundles, everything is very forward momentum going forward, thinking into the year. Sony's been doing well. This is a great time for console of gamers a great time and i'm just happy to be part of it and hopefully you know there's always probably going to be this imaginary console war uh but it's only going to be a war if you let it be a war and 
it's it's not the it's not the piece of plastic that we play on. It's the gamer who's gaming on them. Yep. And I just I want to contribute more to gaming. And th- like I said, this is a start for me, Michael. And it's exciting, man. Um, it is. But, well, and look, um, we've got we've got a Nintendo console coming around the corner that we we don't even know about yet. I mean, we know what it we know what the code name is. Oh, the uh, NX. The NX. I mean, so let's talk about Nintendo for a second. Yes. So Nintendo also put out their quarterly earnings. Now, what's interesting about Nintendo is even though they had not nearly as strong uh, a quarter as Sony, Microsoft, uh, EA, or any of these guys, um, they did profit. But, and this is weird. This is why I don't understand. You know, I don't understand finances. Their stock dropped twenty percent. Like they lost five billion dollars in stock i don't i don't i don't know if maybe it had anything to do with uh the fact that their first uh you know they're diving into mobile their first mobile game really isn't even a game um i so you know they they i don't know why um you know if you look at their actual earnings and this is why Nintendo has survived. People wonder how Nintendo could even still be in business, how they how they haven't folded like Sega, like other companies. Well, they made $26.3 million in profit this quarter. Wii U sales are actually up. Now, you know, we talk about how, uh, you know, Sony shipped 4 million consoles in the last quarter. Microsoft shipped, I think, 2 million consoles in the last quarter. Um, the Wii U shipped 0.72 million consoles in, in the last quarter. However, it's up year over year, and they're they're, uh, they're they've sold over two million uh, 3DS handhelds in the first half of the of the uh, fiscal year. And then you have games. This is where the strength of Nintendo is, and this is where if I'm Nintendo, and I've said this before. Um, you know, I know that they, I know everybody's hung up on graphics, 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 but this plays to the strength of my, of Nintendo's portfolio and their IPs. Splatoon, which we know won two Golden Joystick Awards, two million sold. Mario Maker, Super Mario Maker, one of the funnest looking games I've seen, almost two million sold since it launched in, in September. So that's going to be a two million seller if it's not already by now. Animal Crossing, a highly popular game, two million units sold. So let's say next year, uh, the rumors are true, and the NX launches in in the fall, and you have a lineup that only Nintendo can bring you, right? Donkey Kong Country, Zelda, which you know is going to launch. Um, some sort of Mario Brothers. Uh, maybe, you know, I, I would love to see a return to that Mario 64 type game. Um, a Metroid. I mean, could you imagine what they oh. could launch with? I mean, Star Fox, Wave Race. I mean, you name it. Um, Kart. Mario Kart. It, to, to be honest with you, and like, and, and, and Phil Spencer has acknowledged this, uh, Nintendo strength has always been their first party games. Oh, and, 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 and here's, here's my take on it and my 35 years of gaming. Um, you got to have some third parties. Yes. Um, y- y- you need third party support. You need that. But the reason people purchase a console is not third party games. Uh, it, it, you know, you can get on Twitter, you can get online, you can read about the resolution, the frames per second. People buy a console because of its exclusives. I know I do. Um, exclusives, you got to have those exclusives. And, you know, just like Microsoft and Sony, Nintendo offers those, those exclusives that nobody else can provide. And that's, that's where they, they get a lot of, you know, customers from. Um, and, and they make games that are fun. And, you, you know, with all this stuff, we have to be real important because we've seen some games that have come out this year on some of the platforms that look amazing, but the gameplay is just horrible. I mean, they look fantastic. 
They last about three or four hours long, but the gameplay just stinks. So I think what Nintendo does, they've always had that, you know, everybody loves Nintendo. Their games are fun, and they're fun for all ages, especially for families, and that's a major strength for them. Yeah. Absolutely. My first Nintendo console was the N64. And Fantastic console. It really was, and the first game that really caught my attention was Mario 64. And I mean, that's the, I've said this before too. That's the game that made me go, why in the world was I a console fanboy back then? Cause I was the big, I was Mr. Sega. Um, you, you, you'll always hear me talk about Sega. You'll always hear me reminisce about Sega. my dream cast, about my yeah, dream sorry. cast. <laughs> you know, my days is, uh, you know, my, my, I, I, I my connection to Sega goes back to even my beginnings in game journalism when I was a editor for a, a Dreamcast site called Dreamcast HQ. And I mean, I it was, it was the first time I met Peter Moore, uh, who's you know who we all know is now with with EA. But I mean, that's I, I have such a, a love for Sega that I didn't want to hear anything about Nintendo. I I was just you know right whatever Sonic. And well. And at the time, Mike, you got to remember the Nintendo 64, there was a big debate because it was cartridge based. So, mm -hmm. and these systems were moving forward, you know, they're on CDs and Nintendo decided to stick with the cartridge, which we all know is more expensive to manufacture and you have the plastic and there was, but the Nintendo 64 was a great system. I, uh, Wave Race was one of my favorite games on that Mario 64. And still to this day, I love that system. That was a lot of fun for me. Had a crazy controller. Oh God! Yeah, <laughs> that it's thing like, was that thing was bizarre. Looks like some but, kind of Chinese star, you know? There, you know, it was like a trident. It was like yeah. a reverse trident. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> just I mean, they had the weird, you know, they've got like three different prongs sticking out. You got analog sticks everywhere, you know? It's craziness, but but you know, people loved it. Now, for those of you children. Who don't remember what one looks like or never saw one? There it is. There she is. Look at look at how beautiful. Look at it. The contour, the lineage. <laughs> it's perfect. <laughs> that, and by the way, there's a button underneath here. <laughs> right. So you had one analog stick. You had your D-pad. So if you wanted to, it was bizarre. You held, you held here and here, and if you wanted to. Use the D-pad. You had to move your hand to the I other side. I feel like I'm in a Matthew McConaughey car commercial talking about <laughs> this. <laughs> <laughs> and and then underneath was the Z button. And then right. you still had shoulder triggers on top oh, of that. Oh, yeah. You, you got this a button for everything. Controller mm -hmm. I had ever held. But, man, I didn't care because it was just great. It was so great. It was such right. a great <laughs> yeah, and it snapped me. It, it, it made me grow up. To be honest with you, I mean, it made me really realize that, um, you know, every system had something to offer. Uh, there's the back of it. There's the Z button, and it even had a rumble cartridge slot. Yes, it had the rumble. Yep, yep. <clears throat> so, yeah. <laughs> Oh my, good times. That's anyway, a beast. Um, you didn't know yeah. with, whether to game with it or to kill somebody with it. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> like brick, like brick from Anchorman. Phaser <laughs> set to stun. You know, right. I killed someone with a trident. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, um, so Nintendo, despite their bizarre stock drop, actually is doing is doing well profit wise and that's why they can afford to really kind of i hate to use the word fail but i think we can be honest about this the wii u was a failure uh, as far as you know consoles go if it wasn't they wouldn't be working on a console two years into the next generation um but because unlike unlike a company like sega who really took a bath on the 32x to the saturn to the dreamcast um, and then undershot, you know, uh, the Dreamcast undershot the, the the whole DVD thing and all that. They could never recover. They didn't. They just could never recover. Nintendo can recover because Nintendo Nintendo 
the Wii was a money printing machine, and they could take the hit with the Wii U. And now, because of their software, the you know they're they're profitable again, and they can put that into R and D. And now we'll have an NX console that hopefully will be what what we're hoping for. Well, and and I think they can. Uh, I think, and and here's my take on it. I, I love. I think this, and, and I've I've debated this with several different people. I think this is going to be a short console generation. I think that you're going to hear announcements. It's my prediction within the next three years. You're gonna you're gonna hear more talk about the PS5 or their next system, and you're possibly going to hear stuff about the, the, the next Xbox console. Phil Spencer's already, already stated that uh, this will not be the last Xbox console. Um, they're building this infrastructure, and I know a lot of people are worried. They're like, man, I just bought these new consoles. You mean Techno, there's going to be another console maybe three or four years? And I'd say yes, because technology is moving so fast and forward all the time. Um, th these next gen consoles that came out, they're a step up from the the PS3 and the 360, but it's not as huge of a step up as the last generation. So these are these these systems that are out now are already technically behind in in, in hardware. Uh, they are a step up, but th they could they could be more than what they are, and I, I think that's why it's going to be short generation. That's why you're seeing the NX that's going to be surfing. Surfing, um, you know. Sometime they're going to uh, oh, talk, talk about, about me it. making up words. Surfing. Surfing. <laughs> I know. I'm sorry. I was. Hold on. I, Let me write that one down. That's that's surfing. I was choking on another Reese cut. Damn it. Um, <laughs> these late night talk shows. I got to have plenty of sugar in me to keep me going. You know. So I'm. Uh, I got the Mountain Dew here going. The Baja Blast with the Black Ops Three codes on it. And. Uh, <laughs> Dude, but, uh, you were this, man. You've just become a, a talking commercial. <laughs> I love. Well, I love games. I know people are like, man, that. No, I'm talking about the up. Reese's Cups and oh, the Mountain Dew. You're crazy. Yeah, <laughs> we're gonna. Yeah. You know what? I'm gonna use that. I'm gonna send that out. We're gonna get sponsorships. The Next Level Gaming Podcast, sponsored by Mountain Dew. Oh, they're they're making. I'm telling you, who's making more money than all the consoles? It's Doritos, yep. Mountain Dew, and Hot Pockets. I'm going broke. I mean, <laughs> I, Taco I, Bell. Do you know I, how many? Do you know how many <laughs> Quesarito big boxes I bought in the last two months trying to win that damn gold PS4? Well, you could have bought the gold PS4, probably. <laughs> you know, it's what five, six dollars a big I box. I mean, if you get two or three a week, that's fifteen dollars a week. I know. You know, you're looking at sixty dollars a month. You know, here in a few months, you can have you one. Just you I'll just have to. I'll be eight hundred pounds, but I'll have it. Well, I I think I've had like 38 to date hot pockets. I've been buying them in boxes of 12 Good and inside God. for the listeners out there they actually have halo requisition codes inside the hot pockets boxes, but they're in like light yep. pink ink and you can't see it. You almost need like some kind of decoder ring or something to see it. So And if you and if you don't tell your wife about it, she throws it away. But that's I'm not, I'm right. Not and then, you know, then it's gone. So for all of you out there buying Hot Pockets for Halo Rec codes, which I recommend everybody go out tonight or tomorrow and buy you some Hot Pockets. <laughs> I'm going to put a plug in for Hot Pockets. They're tasty. <laughs> They're a fantastic treat. And you get about 2,000 Rec points in each box. And about so there, 2, there you go. calories. Per, <laughs> about 2,000 calories per Hot Pocket. Oh, you work it off with gaming, trust <laughs> and and the stress from Twitter and the internet and the social media. You'll lose, you'll lose the poundage real quick. <laughs> <laughs> it all goes right. It all goes to your thumb. Right. That's right. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> so anyway, Nintendo. what were we talking about? Nintendo. Yeah. Nintendo. <laughs> Sorry. Um, <laughs> So the one thing that and and um, <laughs> how to get us back on track? Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, man. I'm all excited. I hot pockets, <laughs> Nintendo. Yes, Nintendo. They're uh, successful. So um, the the one thing that they did announce, you know that Nintendo is is trying to now they're also breaking into the to the uh, uh, mobile market. So they want to release games to mobile. And everybody thought that, oh, we're going to get Mario, we're going to get Zelda, we're going to get, you know, all these great, all these great Nintendo games and characters 
on our iPhones and Galaxies and, and iPads and all that? Well, their first title, it's not even a game. They call it a game. It's called Mitomo. Um, basically, you customize your me, and then you communicate with me's by other players. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, but, uh, okay. <laughs> it's, it's social media right. for your me. Right. Aha! That's how they'll market it. Social media, M I I T E A. Oh wow! I just was thinking about the Matrix when what's his name was going me me me, you know. Oh right. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right. I, well, that's their avatars. That's their me's. Their me's so, are very important, you know. Yes. Now it will be free. So <laughs> thankfully, a free me. It's a free, it's a free me, Michael. <laughs> right. <laughs> Free me, to, free, free me, free me, Tomo, free me Tomo. <laughs> right, free me Tomo, and it's coming out next year. <laughs> now, okay, so to be you know to to round that out, now they did say that they were going to uh, <laughs> that they were going to release another, um, I think four games uh, titles by 2017. Oh, so wow. I'm assuming that you know this just kind of being their first foray into it um I, I i'm assuming that that's uh that's what i don't know i don't know what the hell this is to be honest <laughs> with you. i really don't um i don't think anybody does uh and perhaps that is why that is why the stock dropped it could very well be why their stock dropped um well They've always done their own thing. Nintendo, it doesn't matter what's popular at the time. It doesn't matter what format that's popular on gaming. Nintendo's always been known. Oh, look, there's pictures right there. Yes, I'm showing pictures of what this actually is going to look like. Oh, my God. It's, it's just, to me, it looks like a, um, an Xbox app, like a smart glass app with your avatar. Pretty much. I mean, that's what it looks like to me. I mean, it looks like you're, uh, I mean, do you feed these things or do you, you they, oh, they look, they, questions, answers, they communicate. That dude has no face. He has no face. <laughs> so that's, remember, okay. Remember the Sega Dreamcast? Remember? Oh, I loved it. One Sonic of my favorite Adventure? systems. Yes, loved it. See, this is why I brought you aboard. I knew that. I love the remember, Dreamcast. Remember Sonic Adventure? Yes. And remember what you could do with the VMU? And yes. while you're while you're sitting at work, you can, you know, grow your little uh your little Tamagotchi guy and put him back in the game. <laughs> That's this right. feels this feels an awful lot like this. I just I, I don't know what to say. I don't know that it could catch on. I mean, if they're, you know, my kids are kind of nasty to me sometime. If these me's are nicer to me, <laughs> I, I mean, I might learn to like these free me. <laughs> you know, it might not be so bad. <laughs> oh, my. Go to your room. I'm going to play with my me. That's right. <laughs> yeah. Oh <my>. yeah. <laughs> no. Well, investors weren't happy about it, but I, I don't know. We're going to see. <laughs> So. Were you gonna? Are you gonna mention tonight uh, on the uh, the uh, oh the other mobile uh, topic we were talking about the CC? Yes, we are going to get to that in a moment. Um, I wanted to just quickly because the the only other company that put out their earnings report last week was EA, and there were some interesting uh, stats I wanted to to pull out um, that that really have some bearing even on the on the winter. And uh, what's coming up? Because uh, you know winter is coming. Um, they are year to date. EA is once again the number one publisher on PS4 and Xbox One. Show you how big EA has gotten. Uh, well, and the they, EA Access uh, too. That's fantastic. Yeah, yeah, their their subscriptions for EA Access have doubled since the last quarter. And now it's had some some good reason battlefield hardline came into the vault 
uh, Dragon Age Inquisition, which I haven't started yet. Fantastic. Uh, it's going to be in my backlog. Um, you know, of course, I've uh, been playing Need for Speed uh, through the uh, pre-trial. And uh, same with uh, Battlefront. You're going to get it, you know, uh, a week early through EA Access. So EA Access subscriptions have doubled. So that's doing very, very well. Speaking of Battlefront, over 9.5 million players got into the Battlefront beta. It's the largest beta in EA's history. The game's going to be huge. Uh, and, and, and I'm no matter what you think about the cost of the DLC, it's Star Wars. People love Star Wars. It's a shooter. People of all ages love it. I think that game's going to be huge this holiday. Huge. I, do, I do too, even though I'm not going to be one of them. Um, I, I, I'm a campaign player. I got to have a campaign. I've made one exception. Titanfall. Only one. Titanfall. I'm even now soft on Rainbow Six Siege because Rainbow Six Siege has no campaign. And of all the games to not have a campaign after Vegas and Vegas 2, that's just ick. And the I... same thing, you know, I've played so many Star Wars games that had great stories and campaigns that now this doesn't have one. So I, I don't know. I'm still I'm still on the fence. Well, I just making my plug for Star Wars, I feel that if the multiplayer is good enough like it was in Titanfall, and I thoroughly enjoyed uh, Titanfall, I think I got to Gen 10 in four or five weeks. I played the heck out of that game. And I still, still play it. Uh, 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 and still today, I think it's one of the best shooters that I've played. The guns felt right. It's a lot of fun to play. The addition, the, the mechs. Um, you know, the things that were going on in that game. So I'm not against buying a completely online game. I mean, for years, people, have, Battlefield fans, have been screaming to not have a campaign. They just want multiplayer. As long as, you know, because there's a lot of games that are campaign that don't have a multiplayer. So I think it's kind of unfair for, for me personally. I, I mean, there's games that have campaigns, don't have multiplayer I think it's fair to have games that are multiplayer that don't have campaigns. As long as they're done well, I don't see any problem with it. And, you know, from the beta, we only got to play what, Mike, was it three, three parts of the beta were only the ones available to try out. Right. So there, were, there was a lot of that game that we didn't get to play in the beta. And you know that DICE is going to support that game. So, um, you know, like I said, I purchased it. I, I made the leap. And uh, I'll probably like to do a review on it with you. <laughs> That'd be great. Uh, we'll do. We'll definitely do some um, some streaming uh, now. We've got a couple videos up now where uh, I ran through the uh, Xbox beta, and um, you know I'll be glad to do some pre-launch streaming when uh, when the EA Access rolls out. Um, and you you know you can do the same, and maybe together we can do some. Some of that, and and then collaborate on a on a review for it when it's ready. Oh, that'd be awesome. So we'll yeah we'll talk about that and and figure out how we how we uh, how we handled that. Um, now uh, to round it out. Um, oh, and by the way, some other small you know just kind of this is how big EA has gotten. Um, six over six million monthly average players play Battlefield Hardline and Battlefield 4, which tells you how big that series is. Uh, old Repu Star Wars The Old Republic subscribers increased 33% since the announcement of their latest expansion, Knights of the Fallen Empire. And remember, that's a free-to-play game unless you want to subscribe. So right. subscribers are taking off. Um, monthly average players of their sports franchises, Madden, NHL, and FIFA, have increased 30% year over year. So that's getting bigger. Game sessions for Madden NFL Mobile are up more than 300% over last year. So, I mean, they're just, EA is just becoming unstoppable. And of course, next year, we're going to hear Titanfall 2 news and um, Mass Effect. They haven't even, they haven't even, they haven't even talked about Mass Effect yet. And they, you know, BioWare, of course, is part of EA. So, um, they're, they're looking, they're looking very good. Uh, 
going into next year. No, so. m- most definitely. They're doing fantastic. Yeah. Uh, one other piece of news that kind of uh, came out, nobody's really talking about it um, as we balance out some of this. Um, there's a game market research company called NewZoo. I've never heard of them. Um, apparently, they've, you know, they they have a they have this top twenty five companies by game revenue, so uh, annual and quarterly financial reports. So they they pretty much aggregate. Uh, here we go. Microsoft and Sony estimates represent all Xbox and PlayStation non hardware platform revenues, including Xbox Live and PSN revenues. So the number one uh, company is Tencent. Um, Tencent is a, uh, I believe it's Chinese company that um, they, they, they are responsible for a ton of games and they bring in a ton of money. Number two on this list is Microsoft. Amazing. Fantastic. That's, that's awesome. And their year over year growth on software is 6%. And four percent, respectively. If you do, um, I guess this is uh, quarter one, fourteen, fifteen, and then you combine one and two. So they're doing quite well. Number three, no surprise, is Sony. Uh, they're not quite year over year growth, but that is uh, if you combine. But that's also because um, their internal output first party wise isn't quite there yet i expect 2016 their year over year growth in software sales is going to skyrocket and they continue like microsoft to gain um subscribers to their online so you know since psn plus now is a charge on the ps4 obviously if you want to play online or you want to get the the free games you have to subscribe. And it's something, um, by the way, we're going to get to in a in a, a couple of minutes because there's something um, I have kind of a an opinion on something that uh, is in our list. Um, but PSN subscribers and Xbox Live subscribers are up. Microsoft is making um, good revenue on their first party games, and you know, uh, so they are the number two. Um, company by game revenue three is sony four is ea five is activision six is apple and seven is google um warner brothers has actually kicked in they're at number nine and you know they've had some strong sales not only with witcher 3 but with batman batman yeah yeah batman so they're they're in there um and then nintendo is number 12 um, take two is fifteen. I've skipped one on purpose because that's going to be our next uh, our next topic. Uh, take two is fifteen. Square Enix is seventeen. Disney, Konami, dropping dropping like flies. Konami, Bandai, and Sega. I skipped one on purpose. So this news broke in the last what forty eight hours. Oh yes, it's a hot yeah. It, it's it's actually uh, yeah hot topic. <laughs> King Digital, for those of you who are hooked on your uh, smart device, you know your smartphone and, and tablets, put out this little no nothing, um, not really successful game called Candy Crush Saga. I'm being facetious, of course. Um, Candy Crush Saga has zombified many many a uh, an adult <laughs> i uh, i have seen lots of lots of people my age um just you know what are you playing candy crush saga and uh you know of the seven thousand invites i get to play that game a day on facebook <laughs> so it's kind of a popular game and uh so they are in the news you want to uh Want to fill everybody in on what, what's going on? Well, yeah, actually, I have a few things. Um, you know, uh, King Digital, 
um, basically sold Candy Crush to Activision slash Blizzard for 5.9. Again, I'll say that. $5.9 billion. Yeah. Well, they sold their old now, company. They, they now own right. King. Now, to put that in comparison, uh, Microsoft paid uh, less than half of that. They paid $2.5 billion for Minecraft with their offshore cash, just like uh, you know Activision did. What surprises me about this is King Digital was actually surprised Activision was interested in buying the Candy Crush and all that uh, because Activision has really not been a big uh, big advocate of mobile gaming. Um, now, one thing I take out of all this, besides all these stats and everything, um, I can see why, why Activision did it because uh, their shares have went up, but there are 500 million monthly users, and that's across 200 countries. So there are people that play Candy Crush everywhere, and I can see why Activision did this. Mm -hmm. But just to add something, this kind of upsets me because this goes back to my thing with, you know, for years I've, I've loved Call of Duty, and I've bought every game. But if Activision can spend $5.9 billion to buy King Digital and Candy Crush and all that, that kind of debunks the theory that they didn't have money to put in dedicated server for a next gen shooter. <laughs> I, I thought you might bring that up. And I just, I, I, I just want to add that because uh, now I, I don't think that every game that comes out needs a de uh, dedicated server, but the fact that Activision dropped, which is mostly an all cash deal, by the way, that they dropped $18 in cash per share. Right. You know, the fact that they had the money for this acquisition means that, that Activision has the money to give gamers what they deserve and Call of Duty for years, and that is dedicated servers, get rid of the peer-to-peer. -peer. Um, it, it just goes to show you they've decided to spend that money elsewhere. So I'm actually surprised by the acquisition. I'll see how it plays out. But uh, it, me, I look at it kind of in a different way, and I'm thinking, man, that's money they could have spent on COD. And I think well, a sure. lot, of, and and I think a lot of people they owe it to people that have been purchasing COD for years. Uh, I, I just it, it kind of gets me in a bad place with that. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me and let me, um, if I might, let me play devil's ad advocate for you on that, because. Um, and I guess this happened. This happened yesterday. So I was, uh, I was a little in, you know, a little wrong about Activision's. Uh, also, their third quarter 2015 financials. They do a different um, calendar year, uh, fiscal year than everybody else. So they're on quarter three. Um, they grew 38 percent year over year. They. Correct. They generated six hundred ninety-seven million dollars in non-GAAP digital re digital revenue last year alone, or just in this past uh, uh, quarter alone. So, part of that, you know, part of their year over year is on games like uh, Advanced Warfare, and of course Destiny. You know. 25 um, million users, yeah, yeah, registered users on Destiny. But I want to but I want to show you something. I want to show you why I don't think they care about dedicated servers. This is their this is their report. Okay. Activision's public Activision Publishing's Call of Duty franchise year to date not gap non-gap revenues increased by a double digit percentage year over year due to strong catalog sales of Call of Duty Black Ops, Black Ops 2, and Call of Duty Advanced Warfare, which means Black Ops and Black Ops 2 on the heels of Black Ops 3 coming out is still selling for them. Call of Duty Advanced Warfare remains the number one game on next generation consoles life to date, beating out Destiny. So they look at that and they say, well, we don't have dedicated servers, but people are still buying the game in droves. So why not take that money and put it towards Candy Crush Saga and King, where they could then break into the mobile market 
and try to scoop that up like Microsoft did with uh, Mojang. Um, oh yeah, and 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 I see that, and that's a <clears throat> that's a very valid point. And I hope nobody was offended by because I love I still have always loved Call of Duty. Uh, I'm debating on whether or not to buy the Black Ops Three, but eventually there's going to come some point with these shooters, especially that they're going to have to up the ante because after a while, eventually, after so many Call of Duties, it's like the Friday the Thirteenth movie. Once you get to, to the 50th episode, <laughs> they're going to, you know, I think that's a natural progression. I, I think that uh, I, I would just love to see it. I think it would be great for the Call of Duty fans to have uh, dedicated servers in all matches. Uh, agreed. Um, yeah. You know, uh, for full disclosure, I haven't bought a Call of Duty game since Black Ops. Wow. And I'm oh, talking wow. the original Black Ops. I mean, I oh, did wow. not buy Ghosts. I did not buy Advanced Warfare. Not really gonna buy. I might buy Black Ops Three. I might. Um, I'm not. You know, there's just again, I have such a backlog of games, so it might come later. But I really, you know, I I I used to love the older Call of Duty games uh, that were based on, you know, World War Two, that kind of thing. These newer ones, I I get that with Titanfall. You know, um, that whole right. that whole thing of you know well. Titanfall is just Call of Duty with with mechs. Well, okay, yeah. So then, you know, Advanced Warfare really to me was Titanfall without mechs. So I mean, I, I had the game that I wanted to play. Call of Duty just hasn't done it for me in in a very long time. No, um, and Black Ops Three almost to me from what I've seen and uh, the short time playing it. And Black Ops 3 to me seems more like Advanced Warfare 2. It, it just, it, to me, it looks more the same uh, yeah. as, the, as the last game. And that's what, I, right, I agree with you. So. Uh, but it's like buying a stick of gum. I mean, you know, people buy Call of Duty I, out of habit. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, I know that I've done it for years. Yeah, um, I just I hope at some point Activision sees the need to to like deliver because w you know when you go over all those numbers, Michael on COD, it's astronomical. We're talking we're talking a boatload of cash, and you don't need to be a financial wizard to see that they're raking in the money. And I just feel like it's time to give gamers back that w I think that. Th the, the better servers would help the game, not just, in the, not just in the competitive gaming, because whether or not you're a casual gamer or you're a serious gamer, you know, everybody deserves a fair match. And the peer-to-peer -peer servers in COD have to go at some point. And, you know, maybe, maybe we'll get that in the next Call of Duty down the road. I, I don't know. Could be. Now, on the other side of this, real quick, we'll um, just touch on this for a second. Uh, Destiny, which is another game I have not really played or gotten into, but I know a lot of people who um, who are hooked on it. Uh, they now have over 25 million registered Destiny players. It's amazing, yeah. Uh, yeah. Day one downloads broke PlayStation records. Day one engagement saw the highest number of active players in Destiny's history, and this is just with the Taken King. Daily player engagement is now well above three hours per day. That's insane. You know what it is, too? And, and I, this is my I, – I played Destiny for hours when it first came out. And I eventually stopped playing the game before the Taken King. I, I stopped playing months ago. Now, you, you know, of course, I had my own reasons for why I stopped playing it. But the type of game that it is, the MMO, the shooter, it's one of those games, once you've invested time into it, it's almost like you play it out of habit. It's it's like do it's one of those games where you have to constantly do maintenance on it. So mm -hmm. it doesn't it doesn't surprise me that they've got. I do, I wouldn't. I guess is what I'm saying. I don't think it's because Destiny is such a fantastic game, as as much as it is, it's a game that requires constant maintenance, and therefore it has long legs to the game. Uh, if if you're into the MMO shooter. I know they don't like to call it an MMO, but it is an MMO. Um, and but a lot of people are really into that, and it gets you hooked. Once it gets you hooked, I have a lot of friends that still play it today, and 
I was surprised. I looked at my friends list, you know, and here Halo 5's out. We've got Forza 6. We've got all these fantastic new games out, uh, and people are still playing Destiny. And I'm thinking, man, uh, why aren't they on Halo right now? Uh, take a break from Destiny for just a couple of days. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, I understand. I understand the the, the appeal to the game, but it, you know, like I'm just real big on supporting. Like for me, especially the Xbox exclusives. Um, you know, when a game comes out, I like showing support for that game. Destiny's not going anywhere, uh, no. but but I can see why they have the customer retention and. And this is the same thing with The Witcher 3, Michael. Uh, CD Projekt Red, uh, you, can, you look at the sales and you look at the amount of people. Witcher 3 sold $6 million in six weeks. Yeah, that's insane. It's insane. So what that's telling people, people or gamers are liking bigger and better games. They don't mm -hmm. want to sp spend $60 on an eight-hour game and then put it back, you know, and then nothing to play. They want a game that's that stands the test of time and you know destiny does that whether you're a fan of it or you're not there's there's stuff for you to do in that game and i i would call it kind of like busy work and i think that's it has a lot of pill to people grinding yeah grinding in games has some some appeal that i'm I, I used to be able to do like there's some games i get it there's some games that i grind on um i i don't know yeah, I don't know if I could do it with The Witcher with with that many hours to put in just because of the time. But I, um, there are some games that I that I've grinded on, you know, an hour a day, an hour a day, an hour a day, even in in the the time I could play. And so I, I don't I don't disparage anybody who who likes to do that. Oh so. no, I'm a I'm a grinder myself. I mean, I just like I like the big games. The bigger, the better. I mean, you know, I've got 400 hours in The Witcher. I had 600 hours in Neverwinter. I mean, most of the time when I play these games, I, I amass tons of hours because I don't like hopping from game to game, um, you know, which there, there's a lot of gamers that do. They, they, they buy a game and play it for two or three hours, and then they hop to the next one. I'm more of those guys. Like, I, I like to play a game one at a time, play it for hours, enjoy it, go to the next game, you know, when I've had my feel. And, uh, but yeah, kudos to Destiny though. That that's amazing that they've been able to do that. And I yeah. hear Destiny Two is in the works. I haven't yet heard that, but um, I wouldn't be surprised. An E three announcement, maybe. Maybe now this is just what I'm hearing, but I'm hearing things about about that, and um, you know they've had so much success with it, and. Knowing Activision, <laughs> they're going to roll with it. They're going to roll with it. Why wouldn't know? they? Why wouldn't they? You know. No. All right. So that's Activision. Um, so uh, we are coming up on the two-hour mark, which is great. This has been a lot of great talk. <laughs> I want to. Um, I want to hit some quick stuff, and then uh, we'll wrap up and go hit some. Uh, Go hit some gaming. Um, we talked a little bit earlier about Halo 5. Uh, there haven't been any official numbers coming out of Microsoft yet, but uh, over in the UK, it's top the UK charts. Uh, it's outsold Assassin's Creed Syndicate by 50%, which was the last number one game. Uh, which is a multi-plat, by the way. Which is a multi-plat. And it has done, I think, 7.7 .7 million euros pounds whatever it is in its launch which uh makes it one of the highest right now on um and, and i know very well that you can't you can't use this as a metric uh you know more than just to show um what it's doing but uh on amazon which is still one of the largest retailers you know online retailers halo 5 has constantly been in that top five um it's not now right now it's fallout four uh is the number one and number two spot with call of duty three and four uh but call it you know halo five still number nine and it apparently is the hottest selling game the the best selling game so far of 2015 on amazon um 
in fact, I'll show it to you. Well, it's Easy. just it's just a fantastic. It shows the work that Microsoft and 343i yeah. put into this game. And a lot of those games, Mike, uh, you know, we need to make sure we reiterate. We're talking about an exclusive console game yep. going up against multi-plats. So well, when you when you look at it in that manner, it, it's it's doing fantastic. Next you know. to Zelda Majora's Mask for the 3DS, it is the number one best-selling game of 2015 on a console so far with Grand That's Theft fantastic. Auto. It's fantastic. Grand Theft Auto right behind it. And it deserves it. It's um, the beauty of the game, the smoothness. Uh, Halo 5 is simply the best shooter that I've seen yet. Yeah. So it's kudos just, to them. I expect that this game, um, I, I said for the last two weeks that for this game to be a success, it needs to be, it needs to sell a million out of the gate. I'd say within, within, within launch, not like day one, but you know, within, cause you know, three days of NPB is NPD isn't going to do it. Uh, it's got to sell a million before I'd say before the end of the year, uh, easily um, for it to be successful in my eyes. Uh, that's just, you know, it's that powerful a game. It's their flagship game. So, um, so kudos to them. Uh, something that uh, broke today, and I didn't get a chance to put it on the list. Uh, PlayStation now added a ton of new games, uh, like another. I think they're up to like 250 games on PS Plus now. The subscription-based streaming. Um, I was looking for the actual article on their blog. I did not quite find it, but uh, I think we tweeted it out. Actually, yeah, there it is. Um, they have added 105 new games to PlayStation now. And I only bring that up because I think they're gearing up knowing that right around the corner an XOE is coming out on, on you know uh, the Xbox for everybody on the 12th and on November 9th uh, Phil Spencer Back said the backward compatible list is going to be out yes correct so there are games we know about um, Burnout Paradise is on that list you know, all the Gears of War is on that list uh, Rainbow Six Vegas is on that list. Vegas, Vegas 2, Fallout 3. Um, there were a couple of more that, that have kind of been sort of uh, sort of kind of confirmed, kind of backhandedly confirmed. I think Crackdown was one of those. Um, but the whole list is coming out. And so uh, Sony added about 105 new games to PS PlayStation Now. Uh, things like Resident Evil 6, Resident Evil 5, 4, Code Veronica, pretty much a lot of Resident Evil, Dark Side Chronicles, Umbrella Chronicles, Ultra Street Fighter 4, uh, looks like a bunch of Street Fighters, uh, a bunch of Mega Mans, Bionic Commandos, Strider, uh, Capcom All-in-One Arcade Pack with uh, 17 different games, uh, Lost Planet 1, 2, and 3, Dead Rising 2, Dead Rising 2 off the record, um, and then some other stuff. So uh, you can go to the uh, PlayStation blog and check that out. And uh, and I can check it out on my PS4. <laughs> that's right, you can. <laughs> so uh, that's about it. I mean, we you know, some other small stuff. Mirror's Edge was delayed until May, but, you know, nobody's really paying attention to that at the moment. Um, Uncharted 4, and you were talking about dedicated servers. Uncharted 4 uh, has uh, the news from that, from Naughty Dog, is they're not going to use dedicated servers for their multiplayer either. And, That's what uh, I'm hearing. That's yeah. What I'm hearing. And, and <sighs> last generation, that was a big sticking point for Xbox Live was lack of dedicated servers. Why are we paying for Xbox Live when you don't get dedicated servers? 
Correct. And now most of your first party Xbox One games because of their Azure cloud data centers and stuff like that are all dedicated servers. And I got to be honest with you because I'm a big Forza fan. Um, if you look at the, the games on dedicated servers, just simply run better. They do. There, there, there's, there's no argument. It's your connection to that server. It's not, it's not your connection to another peer. It's not host advantage. Uh, there's a smoothness to the game. So the Azure cloud servers that Microsoft have, the dedicated, when they use them, they're fantastic. Uh, I've, I've often thought since the launch of the Xbox One and Microsoft has offered people to use their servers, p people should be taking advantage of that, Mike. They uh, should. Because this is the natural progression of gaming. Now, as far as the Uncharted 4, okay, yes, it's Uncharted 4 is a story-driven game. Yes, there's action and adventure in it, but it's still kind of a story-driven game uh, I know they've got a multiplayer part to it. Now, like I said, uh, I'm, my PS4 is fairly new. I've just had it the last three weeks. Uh, I'm enjoying the system. I, I uh, immediately fell in love with the Uncharted games. I've never played one in my life. So oh, you're going to love, love that. I'm well, running you got around the... with Nathan Drake, and I right. feel like Harrison Ford, like Indiana right. Jones. You got the Nathan Drake collection. And yes. it's fantastic. But I don't really know if they need dedicated servers for Uncharted 4. I think, you know, I mean, it's got a multiplayer mode, yes, but it's not like Halo or COD or Battlefield. Those games should have. They're shooters. They're games that are strictly multiplayer-oriented. I mean, Uncharted's a story-driven game. I'm, You know, and I've heard a lot of people knock them on that, but in, in all fairness to Sony, because I'm trying to be fair here, I'm not so sure they need dedicated servers. I, I here again, I think that's just fueling the the fire. You know, I I, I don't think it's necessarily needed in that game. Um, well, but but it does beg the question. You know, there were a lot of people that complained about paying for an online service. Would the would the would people getting the instead of and Microsoft's had to do this too. You know, we get all these games with gold and stuff like that. Would that be better? Would that money be better suited um, enhancing? I mean, because we don't know. I, I mean, I'm, you know, I, to me, multiplayer is multiplayer. You're, it doesn't matter if it's third person or first person. If you lag and you're, you know, you are a third person game and you lag, the person who's hosting the game is going to have the advantage on you, even in a game like Uncharted. And you know, I don't care about, you know, I, I went on kind of a resolution rant last week um, right. when I went solo because everybody was freaking out over Uncharted being 900p in multiplayer because they upped the, res, upped the frame rate to 60. That part I don't care about. That's, that's, a, that's what happens when you go 60 frames per second in most uh, console games and even in this generation. Well, but, you know, too, Michael, I mean, if you think about it, look at the remake of, of Tomb Raider and, and okay. And look at, and look at these next gen, we've got a next gen COD. Okay. We've used so far, we've had advanced warfare. Uh, you know, I'm just going to include advanced warfare and this new black ops three and there's still you got two next gen shooters and with Call of Duty that aren't using total dedicated servers. So and then you know when they did the remake of Tomb Raider, which has a multiplayer mode, they didn't use dedicated servers, and they've got the Azure Cloud, and the multiplayer was horrible. Uh, so I, I guess what I'm saying, in all fairness, would it be cool to see them? Yes. You know, uh, it, it would be cool to see, like, dedicated servers Uncharted 4. Are they needed? Not really, because COD's not doing it. But I'm looking at it from the aspect of you spent an entire generation with the PS3 not paying for online. And that was the big, that was the big, hey, we get free online. Right. Well, now those people are having to pay for online. So, what you know, with Microsoft investing in Azure 
and investing in the dedicated servers that they got knocked for last generation not having wouldn't that same shouldn't that same apply to people who are now paying for PSN plus who are now going well wait a minute I'm putting down this much money a month or a year how come my flagship game doesn't have dedicated servers I could not imagine the uproar I mean you well I could imagine it because if you remember when the um, when the uh, Master Chief Collection was having so many problems at launch that the uh, dedicated servers came offline while they f were trying to fix things, people went berserk. And you got to see, once again, how horrible peer-to-peer -peer play can be uh, if you don't have the, the best connection and the host does. So I guess what I'm, what, what I'm taking the ta – the place that I'm coming from is – now you have – now you're asking your fan base to pay for something they didn't have to pay for before other than getting a couple of little free games a month. Where is that money going if your flagship game doesn't have dedicated servers for its multiplayer mode? That's all I'm that's, – that's really all I'm coming from. And I agree. I, I think, to be honest with you, I think that in this day and age um, – they should be using dedicated servers for a lot of things now. Um, although I, and, and trust me, there were, you know, I've always been one that like, I've always paid my Xbox live. I've paid it willingly. Um, you know, uh, for a long time, Sony people didn't have to pay for, you know, for their online. So I, I don't really know how I feel about it. I just from a game standpoint though, I don't think it's going to be critical that Uncharted 4 has that. I think that the, and, and since I started playing Uncharted, I've learned to love the game. And I'm excited. I want to go through all oh, three of them. No doubt. No doubt. It's going to be a wonderful game. But they up, they up the frame rate of the multiplayer to 60 to make it more of a, you know, because I guess they, they feel like their multiplayer is going to be a bit more twitchy. And people are going to, look, the beta is coming out um, in December. So you... Are going to, to try you're going to be yeah. our eyes. You're going to be our eyes on for the beta. Um, as long as they allow uh, streaming and there's no NDA, uh, we're going to be looking. We're definitely going to be looking to you, John, <laughs> to bring us. Um, you know, to bring our subscribers the, uh, the the look and feel of their multiplayer. I just think if they were, um, if they were, if they were. Going through the trouble of upping the res the uh, not the resolution, they're upping the frame rate to make it more of a smooth experience multiplayer. You would think that that dedicated servers would need to be a part of that in such a twitchy kind of. Now you're talking about a, a game that relies on a faster refresh rate. Yeah, and like I said, and I don't understand it. It's and yeah, you, you make a valid point, and uh, like I said, and and to me, it's just it's and it. I, you know, like I said, I, I really want to buy COD this year, but that's here again. It's kind of the same thing. Um, you know, that they, that 60 frames per second that, that call of Duty's always bragged about. And you, you wonder why they go for that. And then they don't use the better servers for better online matches for everybody outside of competitive levels. Um, hopefully, hopefully with all the money that Sony's making and hopefully all the money that Microsoft's making, you know, and, and Nintendo's actually profitable. I, I think that these companies, you, you've got to put money back into whatever company you're running and keep delivering. And, you know, I think Microsoft sees that uh, they've invested heavily in the cloud. Uh, we've got crackdown, you know, we've got DX 12, they've got the cloud, the Azure servers, but yeah, the, um, Forza 6, uh, you know, Halo 5, uh, dedicated servers, and they play fantastic. It's almost like playing – it's almost like playing single player, and you don't even know you're online, Michael. So uh, they do make a difference. Yeah. yeah. That, and that's – so that's basically, I, I, you know, you have to pay for it. So you really need to invest back in it. I agree with you. So um, – so, we've come to the end of our of our topic list. John, did you have anything else that uh, we hadn't talked about that you wanted to bring up? 
Well, I mean, I first of all, for everybody listening out there, I, I, I'm sorry I tend to ramble sometimes, but I get so excited talking about all this gaming news. Um, the, the only thing I'd like to add is that uh, I, I'm glad to be a part of Next Level Gaming. Uh, I'm definitely going to, um, you know, uh, I do, I am a, I am college educated. Uh, I, I would like to also maybe sometime, Michael, you know, I would like to be part of reviewing some games. Uh, that, that's going to happen. That's, that's uh, a thing. Writing some reviews. And what I'm going to try to do, uh, I'm going to try to be real objective about everything. And I know I can do it because I'm a gamer at heart. I've, I've, and for everybody listening, I've, you know, forget about the past, anything that I was involved with in the past. I'm looking forward. I'm going to be playing Nintendo. I'm going to be playing Sony and I'm going to be playing Xbox. And my goal is to just give an honest uh, gamer's opinion of, uh, and thoroughly playing these games and, and give people an honest opinion. Uh, and I hope that I can add something to the gaming community and, uh, you know, maybe in, in hopes that maybe someday we can even get some review copies uh, whether it's a PlayStation game, a Wii U, or Xbox, and we can take next level gaming to the top. I'm excited, Michael, and you got I, me I appreciate. Excited. You got I, me excited, man. I'm, I'm, I'm and, so stoked for this. And and let me tell you, as far as as far as I can see, um, you did not ramble at all tonight. You brought it hard. I you don't know about strong, that. And and you know this is uh this is a great um. This has just been a great podcast. I have thoroughly enjoyed it. We actually, and, and you know, in the span of uh, having uh, you start tonight, we've already we've already gained two subscribers. So we're already on the right track. Well, what I want to know is how many hot pockets have I sold? <laughs> <laughs> go out! I'm telling everybody, go buy hot pockets. And if somebody's out there listening, the hot pocket company, send me a hot pocket shirt. <laughs> you know, I want something out of this. Give me a hot pocket shirt. So, if you, yeah. if you are not even a gamer, let's say you don't even, let's <laughs> say you don't even like Halo, which I don't know. There's something wrong with you, but uh, there's some people out there that don't. But let's say that you do not like Halo, but you love hot pockets. Please send your hot pocket box to, to John. Yeah, I'll gladly take it, man. It's it's. It's got important rec codes in there, man, and it's it's you know, uh, it's a wonderful snack. This is true. <laughs> I, I I can't I can't disagree with that. Or as you would say, snackage. Yeah, snackage. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh! But no, I in all seriousness, uh, I I think. Thank you, Mike, for having me on. And um, like I said, each week, uh, like I said, I'm new to all this. Um, one thing I do have going for me is I am a gamer, first and foremost. I, and my friends that know me, um, you know, I kind of was criticized uh, because I didn't have, you know, for the longest time, I was just an Xbox gamer. And I've always had a Wii U, but I, I was only gaming on Xbox. And, you know, to be honest with you, I took a lot of ha grief uh, from people because uh, I was told that I wasn't a complete gamer because I didn't own a PS4. Uh, you know, so I, I kind of got a lot of grief when I had one console. So, you know, now I own a PS4 too, and I can make, ju uh, you know, in intelligent judgments on my own now because I have both consoles and I can do fair reviews of both consoles and things like that. But and now I've caught a little grief from having both consoles, so I can't win. But I decided that you know I'm just going to be me. I'm going to be techno fabulous, John Place, and I'm going to do what's good for gaming, and that's not going to be arguing. And you can have an intelligent conversation with somebody and enjoy gaming. That's what it's all about. So, man, I'm excited. In fact, I'm wired. All these Reese cups, hot pockets. <laughs> I've got Halo Five multiplayer to do. I'll be up for hours. I'm no. just totally screwed now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, uh, look, you know, I, you know who wins. Uh, there's, there's, there's two, there's two things. There's, there are two winners in this from, uh, from having you, uh, from having you join. Uh, big winner, next level gaming, um, and and me. I feel like I've won. 
Um, I, I'm just, I, I can't tell you uh, how excited I am for what, what you and I can do in the future. And, um, you know, our subscribers, the people who are checking us out live, um, thank you guys who have listened all the way through live and those who are going to listen to us later on. Um, you know, they win too because what they're going to get week in and week out is a, uh, a real intelligent gamer that that actually you know can can just uh, first off you can augment you know my uh, my English language creation and, uh, <laughs> and then you just you know just it's it's just going to be such a pleasure to uh, to talk games with you every week and I'm looking forward to not only what you do with me on the podcast but um, what we do on on Twitch, on the YouTube channel with uh, other things, reviews, and, and uh, you know, see where we can take this. Well, and I hope that you'll join me in some multiplayer. And uh, I know that I've, we both have a lot of friends on our Xbox Live uh, friends list. And I hope uh, if anybody listening out there ever wants to game with me, I mean, I just like, ha- I love gaming. I like having fun. I like being corny. You know, not everything has to be so serious all the time. I know that we, tonight, Michael, we went over some numbers and stuff, but people like to hear that too. I mean, you got to give a little bit of both. And, um, you know, but the fun part of gaming, I can definitely deliver on. So, um, you know, oh, I'm absolutely. I, I am too. So let me give the particulars out for those who, uh, are going to be listening to this later on. Please absolutely subscribe to our channel. The way that we're going to be able to do more reviews and things and work with our with partners and and with developers and publishers to uh to bring you more content is if you subscribe uh so please click the subscribe button uh once this is uh once this is posted uh i'll check and make sure that the comment section below is open and we will try to figure out how to make sure that's open for future podcasts please leave your comments below if there's anything that you did agree with did not agree with if you just wanted to give your take on something we talked about uh absolutely um you know just like i said uh just bring it like we do and we'll be glad to uh you know to converse with you and interact with you because without you guys listening to us um john and i are just talking to ourselves uh don't forget to also follow us on twitter uh the official nl gaming twitter feed is at OG underscore NL Gaming. I am at Stinger NLG. And of course, John is at John underscore Place. Also, do not forget to favorite us on Twitch. We will be bringing more Twitch streams as time goes on. Uh, and some of that stuff will come to our channel. So you can watch it live. I just did a Twitch feed a couple days ago for Need for Speed. And we'll be actually, I'll be actually reviewing that probably by the end of the weekend as I continue to make my way through it. Uh, we do have um, Crimson Land review up and some other things. Um, and we've got some things in the hopper that we're working on. We've got some great uh, guests that over the next uh, month or two we're going to start bringing on. And um, like I said, just very excited for what's about to come. John, this has been an absolute pleasure this has been by this has been um uh uh, you know in baseball terms a uh an absolute home run for your first podcast my friend well like i said thanks for everybody bearing with me like i said i'm kind of a noob at the podcast i mean i know about games and gaming so this is all kind of new to me but i'll do my best and i'll try to keep it entertaining as well and uh Maybe we can add some like sound effects or something, or maybe some, you know, fog or something, you know, <laughs> fog. laser light. Yeah. Just any, <laughs> yeah. We need some sound effects, you know, maybe we uh, have, you know, you know, who knows? Sky's the limit. I'll have to look that up and see what we could do. <laughs> it's next level gaming. You got to move forward. We got to, you know, it, it, we got to be dedicated. We have to be at the next level. <laughs> right. Man, that's fantastic. <laughs> All right. So that's going to do it for us on behalf of uh, John and myself. Thank you all for listening. Thank you, those of you who are about to listen. We appreciate your support. This has been the original Next Level Gaming podcast. As always, my friends, have a great week. Have a wonderful weekend and play on, gamers.